Hello everybody, welcome. In this devlog, we're gonna go all the way from a uh, game idea, all the way to a uh, game creation. I'm gonna show you how I do it. It's not the right way to do it, uh, but it's the way I'm doing it. There are a lot of concepts we're gonna have to cover. So make a pot of tea, get a cozy blanket, snuggle in, and we're gonna go to the devlog, go to the video, roll the intro. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to design a game, which is why we start with prototypes. A prototype is like a small version of a game. The idea is get the basic framework and then expand outwards. So what does that mean? Player feedback and rapid iteration should be a cornerstone of your design process. But there's not much to play right now, so we can't really um can't really have people play it yet. Um so we got to make a prototype first. But to make a prototype, we first must understand what the game we're trying to make actually is. For starters, I know I want the garden to be guarded, right? If anything has to be in there, that has to be it. I can't get sued for false advertising. I'm not trying to go to prison again. All right, campers. Now that we have our fantastic game idea, now I guess we got to figure out what the genre is. I feel like that's the, we should try that first at least. Now, realistically, the game idea could fit in a few different genres. It could be a tower defense where the plants act as turrets and they defeat waves of bugs like plants versus zombies. Uh, but I guess that is just Plants vs. Zombies, so let's not do that one. I even played around with the idea of a roguelike, where the gardens would be a stage, and you would go uh, starting from nothing, stage after stage, and seeing how many gardens you can guard in the one life. Which sounds pretty cool, but it's honestly not as cozy as I'm intending the player experience to be. So, the last idea I had was more survival game. More like Minecraft, Terraria, or Valheim. But to me personally, in all three of these indie darlings, the gardening kind of feels like an afterthought. Uh, which sucks, because that's what I like to do. I love the garden. So if we take other mechanics that are typical to a survival game, you know, building, uh, crafting, farming, uh, fighting, drinking, sleeping maybe, uh, eating, potentially. And guy, I just gotta copy and paste those into my game and boom bang, now we got a video game. Cool. Uh, here's the issue though. How do I know how to implement those systems that are right for my game without just implementing them in a generic way because they are tropes of that genre? And if I'm doing it the way everybody else is doing it, then it could have been like anybody else could have done it. You know what I mean? And I don't want that. I want it to be like I did it. I want it to be my game. And if you're making a game and you're following along with this as a, like a guide or something, I bet you want it to be like your game too. And in my opinion, I think that's inherently the issue with starting with this direction of starting with the genre. What if I don't even want eating or drinking? I don't know. I'm, I'm stressed out. I don't need... I, if I don't have those, is it no longer a survival game? I don't know. Now obviously, if it works for you, then that's perfect. But for me personally, it's hard to know where I'm supposed to go from uh, here. I don't know what to do. What, what do I do? Here's a little secret I'm gonna tell you guys, and this is illegal to know. Genres don't matter, especially at this stage of development. Genres are for marketing. It's to allow the players to understand the vague experience that they're about to get into. But using genres to start with the game idea traps you in a little box of what you think that game should be about. And your ideas will be influenced by the common tropes of that genre. If you add mechanics and systems that are supposed to be in your game, but you're not understanding why it's in the game or why it serves the game you're trying to make, it might end up being a little bit muddy. And we don't want muddy. But let me give you secret number two. As a designer, you're not designing a game. Get that idea out of here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're designing an experience that can only be captured in a game. So if the genres are dookie, what do we design a game around? Well, <laughs> glad you asked. So glad you asked. Well, it's simple. We design around a central theme, an experience that we're trying to aim at. In the game of Garden Guardians, I want the player to feel like a garden, though. First, we should always research and learn all we can about our topic. That could be reading books, uh, watching some YouTube video essays, go to a library, you ever been in one of those? You ever heard of a library before? Then let's make an association chart to expand all the ideas related to our central theme. These are just a collection of words that invoke the feeling of a garden gnome. 
Now, ideally, it would be a lot bigger. This is just for the YouTube video. We're gonna use this as a guide for our emotional through line. So for an example, we'll take one of the words such as tinker and artisan, and we'll build mechanics around that idea to make you feel like a gnome. Therefore, to feel like a garden gnome, I want the player to feel creative expressed through crafting to interact with the ecosystem in unique ways. With the theme of respecting and appreciating nature throughout the game. <laughs> I hope it's becoming clear why we want to design this way. Each mechanic has a central emotional theme to tie back to, helping it feel like it has depth rather than a loose connection of mechanics. Tying a very lovely bow around aesthetics and gameplay. To really sell the feeling of being a garden gnome, we have to really sell the aesthetics as well. But I'll leave that for another video. For this, it's all about gameplay, baby. In fact, it doesn't even matter what the game looks like. It could even be pieces of paper. You know what? That's a pretty good idea. Let's make a paper prototype. A paper prototype is essential. It's like a board game version of your game that you can uh, change rapidly. It's a lot easier to change out note cards. Note cards. Note, I don't know if my soul left my body when I said that, or some, I don't know what that sound was. I've never made that sound before. Then it is to code entire systems just to throw it away. And once we figure out the paper prototype, you know, make it you know, pretty good, uh, we can then translate that into the game engine. And even though the real game is gonna happen over the course of seasons, in this prototype, we're just gonna have it go round after round, but that will represent month after month. Did you get that camera? You get that, okay. Camera, you get, you get that one? You get that one? Here we go. What if I go over here? Okay. You got me? Never over here. Let's see. Oh no, I bent it. Sorry, flower. That's fine. You can be in this. Now, me personally, I like to design based off iteration. So to start, we literally just need anything. A simple game loop. Let's have you grow a garden, right? Got it. And then bugs will come and try to get you. They, oh, they're they're gonna try real hard to get you, but you gotta squash them. Make sure to squash them. If you don't, if you don't squash them, then uh, ooh, <laughs> oh, oh no, oh that that won't be good. That will not be good. The ecosystem will be destroyed, and it will be your fault. So we have a game loop. Perfect. We have a way to win, and we have a way to lose. But you don't even need to play it to know that this is going to be boring as something that's really boring. And we know this because the game loop is a straight line. You know what this? You know what this bad boy needs. This bad boy needs a little something I like to call player choice. We need some, we need some player choice. If a player chooses between two abilities, right? One is a snowball ability and one is a rock throw ability, but they do the same damage, that's having the same output. That choice on which spell to have is not interesting. But if the snowball put out fires and slowed down enemies, whereas the rock stunned and broke barriers, that would be an interesting choice because the player gets to choose something that interacts with the world and they can see the outcome of their choice immediately. And that's what makes the choice meaningful. Now to use the super famous quote from Sid Meier, creator of the Civilization series, a game is a series of interesting decisions. Now there is a ton to this statement and I'm gonna give you the shortest version I can. As developers, in order for our game to be fun, we need to present the player interesting choices, especially choices that influence the experience that the player is having. Now this could be cosmetic, this could be gameplay related, and for our circumstance, whether the player wins or loses. So let's go back to the paper prototype. The idea is that you play it, figure out what's not fun about it, and then change it, and then keep playing it, and just iterative cycle, right? And while playing that first edition, I noticed that it was very complicated to keep track of what bug was attacking what plant and what each plant's health was. And it was just too confusing, too stressful. So immediately, I think we should abstract the health and the target to a central location. And you can think of this as the overall garden vitality. For our purposes, I'm just gonna represent that as a bird fountain because it, that's a domi, right? But because the bushes aren't the health bar anymore, what, what should they do? Well, how about when they fully grow, you can harvest it for wood. Dude, now we have wood now, let's go, woo! But we still need that player choice. So how about we get choose to do something with this wood resource? Maybe we could either make an ax to kill bugs faster or make a barricade to last longer. Either way, we're getting something called player power, which is how uh, powerful the player is. But how are we even gonna get seeds to grow into bushes so we can get the wood? We can't go to Gnome Depot, they don't got one of those here. So how about 
for now, the bugs drop seeds. Because that means defeating bugs will feel really good because defeating bugs leads directly to player power. So what if you get hurt, right? What if you break a knee? What if you split an elbow? What are you going to do? You're going to sit there and cry about it? No, you're going to heal. So how about you can use a seed, you can consume a seed to heal. And this is adding another player choice, but it also has cascading effects because the more you heal, the less wood you can get. So now you have to balance your seed resource in, do I want the short-term benefit to heal or the long-term benefit of player power at the risk of potentially dying sooner? The other reason why I really like this choice is because you're using 100% of the garden, which goes back to the love of nature thing on our, on our chart. Remember that from like two minutes ago? Do you see the, do you see the connect? Do you see the, the, the thinking process? Do you see it? And now you have a, a paper prototype, so that's pretty cool. I think we have a prototype. Guys, I think we're ready to go to the engine now. I think we're ready to put it into the video game engine. I think we're ready to make a video game instead of a, of a board game. So let's take this whole prototype and push it over there. <laughs> There's nothing over, I didn't put it over there yet. I, it's on my computer. Stupid. All right, campers, let's see where we left off in the engine about a seven months ago. Ew. Yeah, this sucks. This is not a uh, prototype in the slightest, actually. We gotta, we gotta fix that. So immediately, I made a shield. I feel like, you know, that's the quickest way to get from A to B. So I went and attached the shield, and it uh, was way too big. I don't know what I'm supposed to block with that. Maybe meteors. Maybe, you know, maybe the dinosaurs could be saved this time. That's a little, this is a little better. Uh, I am, I'm not supposed to be flying, though. Uh, and it's also still way too big. It was also supposed to be socketed to the hand, and I, I did it right, but for some reason it was still not working. So maybe it's a model issue, you know, I had a lot of issues with the model, I'm still learning modeling, so that's, you know, it's still relatively new to me. Uh, so I just opened up Blender just to see what was wrong. Oh. Oh, I don't, oh. I don't remember this. I managed to fix it a little bit, um, but overall the whole skeleton was just messed up. It was just ugly. Like it didn't even look that good, too. Like it, it probably doesn't even know how to how to swim, jump, maybe jump. It doesn't even know how to jump. It's just we just need a new gnome. We just need a whole new gnome. Did that? This that this is what I'm talking about. This is what we need. Well, you need some clothes first. Hold on. Now that's a new gnome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a new gnome. This is the old gnome. Look at him. He looks stupid. This is the new one. Way better. Wait, this is the new one dancing. Oh my god, look at those moves. Oh, he's so good. Now, this one should import a little bit better. Now, it is a little bit better, but if you look closely, it's missing a few features of the gnome. Oh, I feel So, the few features were actually colossal and in the air. And I don't remember this part happening at all. How did that happen? This is actually a historical recreation of the last known survivor of the uh, Irish potato famine. But safe to say, Things were going pretty all right compared to last time, and I think we're about ready to reveal the new gnome. Much better. So much nicer. Oh my goodness gracious. Still not where I want it to be, but it's good enough for now. Look at him jump. He's got a whole new jump animations and it scales based on how far he's falling and how high he jumps. That's incredible. Look at him jump. You probably don't, you probably can't even do that. You probably can't even, you probably don't even know how to jump. That's okay. He'll teach you. He's a good guy. He's a good friend. Look at him strut. Woo! Yeah! Dude, he's moving. So I gave him a weapon. In this life, it's either kill or be killed. But what happens if he gets killed? Now whenever somebody dies, they get ragdolled. Uh, which is perfect. It's so much fun. Look at him go. He's dancing. We're making really good progress so far, I think. Here I used the shield model to make a little heal pad and a damage pad because I gave him health. Now there's a few ways I went about this. First I tried each of the characters having their own stats and that was stupid. So I moved it to a parent class that both of them share. This way, if I want to change how the health or energy is calculated, I only have to do it in one spot. So I took the idea one further and made a component called the spirit component. In this way, I can add it to literally any object if I want it to even be breakable. However, through my research, I found this thing called gas, the gameplay ability system, which would be an amazing way to generate stats, make abilities, have online integration for multiplayer games, 
it generally would just fit the game very well, but it seems a little too daunting to implement at the moment, so we're just going to save that for later. I actually turned the stump into a very flexible developing tool, and I can have it use any ability that I want, including spawning anything I want. Even the temporary enemy that I'm using, the acorn. Now I still don't know what the real purpose of the acorn will be, and don't worry about the different colored leaves, that's something that didn't make it into this devlog. Also don't worry about where his shoes are. Don't worry, he, he likes to be barefoot, that's okay. That's alright, he's a hippie. I overhauled the colors and the lighting. It looks way nicer now, it looks so friendly. I gave him a little dash, and I also gave him a stamina system, which I'm going to call energy in this game. I overhauled the weapon system, and really the whole equipment system. Um, now he can dual wield, uh, in theory. In practice, it seems to just had uh, it turned him into a, such a low guy, and sideways, but that's okay. He's lo he, Look at him, he's so good at bowling. Look, he's bowling. He's going to get a strike? Who knows? Uh-oh. Now, now he's in hell. That's all right, I just had to do a little switcheroo on who attached to who. Now the weapon's properly attached to the hand. So now we've come full circle, because the original issue was us not being able to attach a shield to the gnome. So let's go ahead and remake the shield. All right, here it is. And uh, we're still flying, but now I know why we're flying. And I'm just doing it for fun now, look at them. Things are going fantastic at this point. This was about, I don't know, three to four months of work. Um, I really like where the game is headed. I like where, you know, the, the progress I'm making is really good. Um, my life was really busy at this, around this time, so I couldn't really spend effort into making videos. So I primarily just focused on making sure the game progressed. Uh, hopefully that was okay, but uh, we're making really good progress. So it, it seems like at this point I'd be about to upload the video. And then it crashed. The whole thing gone. It crashed. I had to start all the way over. I was so defeated. Oh, but I, I fixed it though, it's fine. Apparently, uh, I just had to move the files into a new project. I just had to remake the main character, so it was actually uh, way easier. And uh, I got the gas system to work, so that's pretty cool. That stands for Gameplay Ability System System. They're right, it's gas! It's all right though, I just needed a little bit of C++, no big deal. And I had to make a character in C++ having the attribute system, and then everything else is now an inheritance of that. Uh, let's take off from where we left off. Now I will not lie to you, it did take a minute, maybe even a month, to get back to where we were. I did, I was able to recover a lot of stuff from the asset folder, but I did have to remake a lot of systems, especially with gas. But now the systems are implemented way better and are much more scalable than they were before. That's alright that I crashed, we just do it better next time. Now let's give this dang acorn some AI. For this project, we're gonna use behavioral trees. Look at this dweeb, he has such a simple AI. All he does is he finds the player's position, moves towards it, and then attacks. And then after a delay, he does it again. Way too simple for what we need. I gave it senses, so it can see, it can hear, um, you see that cone, that's sort of their vision, and then that green circle, that's their last known uh, location of me, uh, after they see me you can see it's following while I'm in their vision. We only utilize the sight sense today. There is hearing, but you know, that's for later. Now having enemies just randomly run up and slap you is boring. That's just a mean child. Let's do something called the environment query system, where it scans the environment and then it can infer data from it. So in this case, we're having it select the target, in this case, the bird fountain, but it could also be the player. It's gonna generate a circle around it and it's gonna pick one of those green spots next to it and move to it. And then after some time, he's gonna come up and whack you. I also love behavioral trees because it looks like a grapevine. You know what, that, that's just fun. So now whenever we toggle the invasion, the acorns are gonna target the bird fountain. Now remember, we're abstracting the week-to-week -week and month-to-month -month gameplay into these rounds. But the idea is at the end of the week, it's an invasion. At the end of the month, it's a bigger invasion. And then at the end of the season, it's a huge invasion. Watch me get triple kill. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, so easy. They suck. They're so bad. They can't actually attack me yet. Uh, so we do gotta fix that. So using the new gas system, I was able to make an ability that the gnome and the acorn share. Where after a 0.2 second delay, it spawns a box, and that box does damage. Now I'm seeing a lot of guardians. I'm not seeing enough gardens, and we gotta put a stop to that. We gotta fix that. So first I tried something where I have a little box, and every ticket, you know, it grew a little bit, but it grew on both 
size of the Z axis, which is not what I wanted. So in the future, I would like a coating approach to the plants, but for right now, I'm just gonna do a simple stage, plant stages, because that's, that's a little bit quicker to implement. So we have basic geometry to represent the different stages. We have a cone, we have a cylinder, and then finally a sphere for the bush. So here I added a way to spawn seeds, to spawn wood, and a crafting table in order to make our ax, as well as in the bottom right, a really quick UI to see your seed and wood count. And now on grass, you can press the one button to spawn a seed, and every round it's gonna grow one stage. I also have a quick little control F that I can do on it and it's going to grow at one stage for debug purposes. You can also water it by pressing F. Now this is going to grow it an extra stage whenever it's supposed to grow. It doesn't cost anything to water at the moment. In the next devlog you'll have a watering can and a water resource. The bushes will also block pathing, path so you could use this as kind of a cheap barricade even though in the playtest that you're about to see nobody did that. You're gonna press F to harvest the bush. It's gonna drop one wood and two seeds, even though in this footage it's only one seed. Also, sometimes the seeds fall through the earth, which is not intended. And then with the two button, you can make a barricade at the cost of one wood. Again, I'm using the shield model. I'm getting so much use out of that model. Now, if we just get enough wood, we can make an ax. So uh, about, that's probably good. We only need three. And if you press F on this little table here, you can make a stick. No, not those sticks these sticks but like the poet jermaine cole said like a hike through the woods i got a stick that i take with me so here we go now we have an axe better at whacking people now if you really like this content you want to see more of it please subscribe comment like it really helps on the algorithm but of course you guys already knew that you guys are super smart probably you know if i would if i were to say smartest people on this side of the mississippi whatever side you happen to land on that's and then we'll you know, we're, we're having two teams of smart people and then we're going to battle. Two sides of the Mississippi we're going to battle and it's going to be a new war. You know, I had to fund the game somehow. Turns out that way is the military industrial complex and big oil. You know, it had to come from somewhere. But if you don't want that to happen, you can probably donate to my Ko-Fi account down in the description. I hope you get groceries, you know, if I, I make more videos if I'm not hungry. You may have noticed during my shameless promotion that I actually updated the terrain as well. I expanded the area, I moved around some trees, I added some choke points, some ponds. The ponds don't really do anything besides block pathing, but that is to change. So the last thing to do before we have a prototype is to add a little bit of barricades. In my mind, the invasion is happening your first night, so I'm assuming you spent the day making at least a little bit of a fort. The barricades are also there to help key in the players of the playtest on how to actually use the barricades. And after five or six long months of development, we finally have a prototype. Now, we came a long way this video. I don't know if you remember, but 20 whole minutes ago, this is where we started. And uh, this is where we are now. And then we have a prototype, we're done, we did it. But what's a, what's a game without people playing it? I uh, fell on a rock, I almost tripped on a rock. Don't worry about it though, it's fine. It's a good, it's a fun rock. Hear that rock? That's a healthy rock, that's a healthy rock. We need people to play it. But I don't have any, I don't know anybody. All the people I know is in Phoenix. So I flew all the way to Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, what am I, a whole plane and everything. It was also for my birthday. It was my birthday yesterday, so don't worry about that though. <laughs> don't worry about that. Happy birthday though to me, you know. Just so I can meet my two best friends from high school. Say hello, guys. Look at them, they're so happy. They're so happy to be here. They're so excited to play this game. Oh my goodness gracious. Trust me, they're beaming with like, this is the happiest they've ever been. We're gonna play a video game. We're about to play a, we're about to play a video game. My video game. Uh, I'm about to play. Yeah, we'll stay at the same time, right? One, two, three. We're gonna play a video game. We're gonna play a game. Right, so we're back at the main area. Um, go ahead and press F on the bird fountain and that's gonna start the invasion. You got it? Oh, yeah, dude, you kinda suck. You kinda suck at this game. Are they... Bro, wait. Are they attacking the fountain? Yeah, yeah. you have to defend the yeah. fountain. If, if the fountain destroys, you lose. Oh. 
No! They, they just straight up fold, bro. Oh. And you can harvest those ones. Those ones are bushes. That's too complicated for this one. <laughs> Help me. Yeah, he can he can walk over barricades. By the way, are you serious? Yup. I don't have an axe. Speed yeah, because you didn't you didn't you need to plant more plants to get the wood. You didn't plant enough plants. Oh. Yeah, Andre. There's a meta. There's a meta, dude. <laughs> Follow the guide. Wait. I'm cheating. Oh, oh. you're cheating? <laughs> <laughs> what? <Mom. laughs> no. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> Yo. Grow it, grow it, grow it, grow it. Get the wood, get the wood, get the wood. You need three. You need three. You need three. Wow. I know. Oh Ooh. my god. Dude, he's Ooh. chunking your health. You need one more. You need one more wood. Oh wait, that one's going. Yo, Yo that one's going. Fuck? You need one more. You need one more wood. Get it, get it, get it. It's right there. Wait, my wait, boy. Attacking the fucking... ah! <laughs> Dude, this is crazy, actually. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Kill him. You barked? <laughs> <laughs> what? Some chihuahua ass energy. Oh my god, that bitch. Alright, alright, alright. Oh, nice. So he just drops two wood, the big guy. Yeah, you gotta pick up his stuff. So, yeah, you, you need some more wood because you can actually upgrade your axe. What? You can, I didn't more know you wood? could upgrade Yeah, yep, you could actually upgrade the axe. You're gonna need three wood. Hey, did you just control F that bush? <laughs> <laughs> what? My bad, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Yo, there's two of them! Oh, yes, dude! Oh my god. I think the oh wait, line. I think they destroyed it. Yeah, they destroyed the fountain. Yeah, patch notes just came out. I oh, know, yeah, new patch. New patch updated the uh, interact radius because it seemed like it was hard to interact. Oh, you can actually. Those footsteps are meaty, holy shit. They are meaty. They're pretty pretty meaty footsteps. I like that. I like the crunch. He likes the crunch. <laughs> Alright, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Alright, go for it. Gimme. Incredible, incredible. Right, yeah, nice. Water. There you go. Almost. Okay, but, so how do I yeah. upgrade the axe? Uh, you just uh, press F on the table. Damn, you have so much more food than I do. Yeah, dude, he's been planning. He's been farming. <laughs> I don't know that it's. You see how it's double bladed now? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there another upgrade to the axe or is it just the double sided? There upgrade? is another upgrade to the axe. Dude, am I just bad at gaming? That might be it. You might just be trash. Oh, dude, you're about to die. You're about to die. Oh, no. Oh, don't get hit. Oh, you're crushing it, though. I get it? There we go. Nice. So that actually one-shots the big guys. Oh, you have one. I like this barrier strat that you're doing. Usually I, like, go from the... Oh! Oh, careful, you have one. Okay, the issue okay. is... Okay. It's becoming quite difficult for me. Sure, right. Dude, I'm them. What are you doing? <laughs> 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 it's quite difficult for me to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you lost. Sam, what are we going to do differently next time? I don't know. I thought I had it in the back. Hop into your big boy. Uh, you gotta be planting bushes like 24 steps. Mm hmm. It's called Garden Garden. It's not. Man. Not garden gardens, dude. Okay. This freaking guy. <laughs> this freaking guy. All right. Man, these ones are spicy. This hurts my mouth. Okay. <laughs> the atomic ones? Oh, they're atomic? Yeah, yeah. dude. What well, I'm going to do differently? Mm hmm. I'm going to be better than Sam. Mm hmm. Bro, you're going to have to get to round 10 and beat the game now. You what lost, bro. The? I you was lost. literally hitting you it. You lost, dude. You literally lost, dude. Only That's round That's crazy, only dude. Round four. <laughs> Andre. So trash. Not me though. There's <laughs> no way. Go back to quick play, dog. What the heck? <laughs>
There's no way. You had 20 so seeds. I know. <laughs> I was trying, bro. All right, Sam. Let's see if you can win. Oh, nice. Nice. Is that it? Is that round 10? Oh man. Dude, look at your four. Sam ended up getting to about round 24 until he called it quits. Uh, just because it was looping round 10 over and over again. And he pretty much had it solved, so there was really no point. Thanks again for watching so far. Um, we're gonna end out with an interview of how they thought about the playtest and then a little outro section. Did you like it? Was it was it actually really fun. Was it actually? Yeah. We're gonna talk to Andre first. What was, uh, what was your favorite part? My favorite part were the planting mechanics. That was your favorite part? Really? Like of the whole game, that was your favorite? Oh, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, okay. Well, for me personally... Are you asking me personally? Yeah, yeah. What personally, you, what, what did you like? my favorite part is punching. Like, I liked punching the okay. attacking. Yeah, the combat mechanics were really fun. What didn't you like about the combat? It was hard to aim. But that, I think that's just because there was no crosshair. I okay. feel like if there was a crosshair, I'd probably, it'd be easier to tell. But right. that, was, that was really it. The way Eddie didn't add that. What would you like to see in the next playtest? I feel like I would like to play the game a little bit slower and less like rushed. Because I'm not, I don't think I'm used to like the harvesting and like planting aspect of it yet. But I feel like if I had time to like adapt at a slower pace through the game, I feel like I could do it very well. Thanks, man. Sam, get over here right now. This incident or else you're grounded. You're grounded, mister. Sam, well... Yeah, it was good. Did you like that? I did. Did you like the experience? It was, it was experienceable. What was your favorite part? Honestly, the fort building and managing resources. So fort, build. you, fort building. Fort building. You get enough resources, you can just start putting planks up everywhere. I'm a Fortnite master, so you know how it is. Do you feel like the choice of whether to upgrade your weapon versus planning the barricades... Uh, was a good choice? Did you did that feel impactful? Yeah, definitely. I, I don't know if it would be like weapons or different kinds of walls or different ways to direct enemies, but would j just like what's most available, like the best tactic at first is always the axe because you need that extra damage. That's right. It's a one shot on the small guys with the axe. So right. that and there's saves a lot of time. Of them that it's Action like, economy. Right, that they'll eventually overwhelm you, whether that be through your health, and when you start taking damage, then you're gonna have to get rid of your seeds, which are an important part of getting wood. All I want is wood, so I can like do that. <laughs> so it's like you're gonna start losing resources if you don't start upgrading your damage. It's just kind of like part of how the progression is right now. I don't know what other options you would present, but I do think the more options you present, the more meaningful choices a player will have. Because okay. eventually it's like, what? what? All right, wrap it up, Buster. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm just explaining the gameplay. <laughs> do you have a specific question? Yeah, I have more me? questions. I have more questions. Yeah. Um, what would you like to see in the next devlog? More guardians? More gardens? Things I can do with the wood, like we were saying. Like, almost like a like a, a skill tree with weapons, if that makes sense. If I could go, like, ranged versus, like, axe up close. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so besides combat, what else did you like? I really liked the, I guess, like, the, the art style or the, the animation style of, like, the, the acorns. I really liked the, the design of them. It was really fun. They were very punchable. Like, I had a good time. I mean, I, I'm coming back to combat, but, like, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. like the, the, art, the, the art style. So do you think it was too much of a nuisance to have to go and plant and put barricades versus just combat because that's your play style? Yes, that is, like, the one thing that I would say I found to be, like, the hardest part mm -hmm. just because I like to be able to just, like, attack and... Uh, figuring out like the leveling up part after a certain amount like of time that I've gone to like adjust. Having to also think about upgrading while fighting, it was like hard to, uh, to adjust to, I guess I would say. The next video won't nearly be as intricate as this one, uh, but this was a cool one, wasn't it? That was the video. Thanks guys. Appreciate it.
Um, do you guys want to play the next one? Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you just like saying that or? No, no, I want to play it, and that will be. On I'm a liar. Patreon. No, it won't. It. Okay, <laughs> Patreon. Thanks, everybody. Uh, next video, we're gonna start to dissect what they said uh, and fix that about the prototype, and then expand. Uh, upon the combat, which is what the focus of next video is going to be. And if you want to see more of Andre, he has his own YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Cosmokazi. He uploads fantastic vlogs. The cinematography is incredible. It was his equipment we were using. That's why it looked uh, super professional. And for some reason, if you want more me, I'm a guest on my friend Alex and Nathan's stream every Wednesday. We're playing Baller's Gate. We're doing an only gnome playthrough. It's a lot of fun, a lot of chaos. Here's the clip. Oh, oh wait, come on, come on, wait. come on, come on. Come on. Oh. No! No! That was our. Oh, that was our chance. That was the one. If I had glory, for glory, for glory. All right. Yeah! Yeah! They each have their Hell own respective yeah, channels, dude. so I'll link those as well. And if you wanted quicker updates on Garden Guardians, you can go to my Instagram page where I upload on my story all the time. I have a highlight reel of me working on the game, so uh, yeah. yeah. Anything you guys want to say uh, to while well, the credits roll? I um, I love you, Jack. Subscribe to Studio Jackie for more updates. Guys, thanks. That's really good. That's really cool. And I'll wait for the next one.